Welcome viewers, in this part of program we will discuss about the integrated plant nutrition supply system. So, let us start with the different sources of nutrients. So, we can categorize different nutrient sources into the manures, fertilizers and others. So, manures are the wastage of animal and plant and decomposed portion which are used for the plant nutrition. Fertilizers are the industrial made chemical elements which are using for the plant nutrition. So, in the manures, we mainly discuss about the bulky manures and concentrated manures and in the bulky manures, FIM, compost and green manures are important one. Under the concentrated manures, oil cakes, blood meal, meat meal, horn, hoof meal, fish manures are important. Under the fertilizers, we can divide into two parts, chemical fertilizer and bio fertilizers. The chemical fertilizers, uh, we can categorize into nitrogenous, phosphatic, potassic, complex, mixed and soil amendments and secondary and micronutrient suppliers. Among the bio fertilizers, nitrogen fixing, pea solubilizing, pea mobilizing and plant growth promoting rhizobacteria are important one. Uh, other sources of plant nutrients are air, water and different cultivation practices like crop rotation, etc. So, let us start with the bulk organic manures. So, bulky organic manure contains a small percentage of nutrients and they are applied in large quantity. They are even though they are applied in large quantity, but their nutrient content is very small. So, farmyard manure, compost and green manure are the most important and widely used bulky organic manures. They supply plant nutrients including micronutrient, they improve soil physical property like structure, water holding capacity, etc. They increase the availability of nutrients, carbon dioxide released during decomposition acts as CO2 fertilizer. Plant parasitic nematodes, fungi also controlled due to some extent by altering the balance of microorganisms in the soil. So, these are the benefits of applying bulky organic manures. So, now we will discuss one by one different bulky organic manures. So, let us start with the FIM. FIM refers to the decomposed mixture of dung and urine of farm animal along with litter and leftover material from roughage or fodder fed to the cattle. On an average, well decomposed farmyard manure contain 0.5 percent nitrogen, 0.25 percent P2O5 and 0.5 percent potassium. So, for application of FIM, we have to apply it uh, before the sowing. At least uh, one month before sowing, we have to apply so that it is well decomposed in the soil and it avail the nutrient to the soil at the time of need of plant. So, generally 10 to 20 ton per hectare FIM is applied and some amount of nutrient present is not available immediately because it uh, takes time for the decomposing. So, about 30 percent of nitrogen, 60 to 70 percent phosphorus and 70 percent potassium are available to the first crop remaining will be available to the next succeeding crop. Next bulky organic manure is compost. So, compost is rich source of organic matter. Composting is natural process of rotting or decomposition of organic matter by microorganism under controlled condition. So, raw organic materials such as crop residues, animal waste, food, garbage, some municipal wastage, suitable industrial wastage enhance their suitability for application to the soil as fertilizer source after having undergone composting. On an average, nutrient content of farm compost is 0.5 percent nitrogen, 0.15 percent P2O5 and 0.5 percent potassium. Compost is poor in phosphorus content, it is about 0.4 to 0.8 percent. So, addition of phosphoric fertilizer into the compost make the more balanced and supply nutrient to micro organ for multiplication and faster decomposition. The addition of phosphorus reduces nitrogen losses. Compost can be enriched by application of superphosphate, bone meal 
and phosphate rock. 1 kg of superphosphate or bone meal is applied over each layer of animal dung while preparing a compost. Low grade phosphate rock can also be used for this purpose. Another bulky organic manure is green manuring. So, green manuring is practice of flowing undecomposed green plant tissue into the soil for the purpose of improving soil fertility. So, there are two types of green manuring, green manuring in situ and green leaf manuring. So, green manuring in situ are the manure for which green manuring crops are grown and buried in the same field. These are incorporated into the soil at the age of 45 to 60 days after sowing and after decomposition it adds about 70 to 135 kg nitrogen per hectare depending upon different crops. So, potent green manuring crops are Crotolaria juncia, Sesbania rostata, Cowpea, Cluster bean, Sesbania aculata. These are the crops which can be used for green manuring. Another type of green manure is green leaf manuring. In this, uh, we have apply green leaves and twigs of trees, serves, herbs collected from the tree and incorporate into the soil for the purpose of nutrition. So, important trees for green leaf manuring are Casia fistula, Liquina lecosepala, Sesbania grandifolia, Calotropis gingetia, Glycerida sepiam, Pongamia globra, Delonyx regia, Palatophorium ferrugenum, Azea directa indica. These are the crops which leaf can be used for green leaf manuring. Now, if we see the nutrient content of different green leaf manures of trees, then Glycerida have the 2.76 percent nitrogen, 0.28 percent phosphorus, and 4.6 percent potassium. Pongamia leaf have 3.3 percent nitrogen, 0.4 percent photo 5. 2.3 percent potassium, neem leaf has 2.8 percent nitrogen, 0.2 percent pto5 and 0.3 percent potassium, gulbar leaf has 2.7 percent nitrogen, 0.4 percent phosphorus and 0.5 percent potassium, palatropham leaves have 2.6 percent nitrogen, 0.3 percent pto5 and 0.5 percent potassium, casea leaves have 1.6 percent nitrogen. 0.2% phosphorus and 1.2% potassium. We will talk about the concentrated organic manure. Concentrated organic manure have the higher nutrient content than the bulky organic manure. And they are important because they have the higher nutrient content and important Concentrated organic manures are oil cakes, blood meal, fish meal, etc. And these are also known as organic nitrogen fertilizer because nitrogen content in this uh, organic manure is more. So, important oil cakes which are edible are coconut cake, cotton seed cake, groundnut cake, linseed cake, niger cake, rapeseed cake, safflower cake, and sesame cake. Some non edible cakes also used for the green manure like castor cake cotton seed cake, crunch cake, mahua cake, safflower cake, these are used for the green manuring and nutrient content of different oil cakes differs from type of cake. So, this is the Zetropa oil cake, Pongamia, this is oil cake and cotton seed oil cake. Uh, some animal based concentration organic manure also included in the concentrate organic manure uh, like blood meal which has the 10 to 12 percent nitrogen. 1 to 2 percent phosphorus and 1 percent potassium, meat meal which has uh, around 10 percent nitrogen, 0.5 percent potassium, 2.5 percent phosphorus and fish meal has 4 to 8 percent nitrogen, 3 to 9 percent phosphorus and 0.3 to 1.5 percent potassium. And likewise raw bone meal is there, steam bone meal is there, horn and hoop meal is also used for the concentrated organic manures. Now, we come to uh, fertilizers and uh, first uh, is nitrogen fertilizer because nitrogen is the main uh, nutrient needed for the plant growth. So, there are uh, four types of nitrogen fertilizer ammonical nitrate, ammonical and nitrate and amide. So, under the ammonical nitrogen fertilizer ammonium sulphate having 20.6 percent nitrogen, ammonium chloride having 25 percent nitrogen and anhydrous ammonia having around 82 percent nitrogen. Under the nitrate nitrogen fertilizer, sodium nitrate having 
having 16 percent nitrogen, calcium nitrate having 15.5 percent nitrogen, potassium nitrate having 13.8 percent nitrogen and ammonical and nitrate fertilizer having ammonia nitrate which is having 33.5 percent nitrogen, calcium ammonium nitrate locally called CAN having 26 percent nitrogen and ammonium sulphate nitrate having 26 percent nitrogen. Amide fertilizer includes urea and calcium cyanamide. Urea is the cheapest one and mostly used fertilizer among the nitrogen fertilizer which is having the highest amount of nitrogen for the practical point of view and 46 percent nitrogen is there in urea and calcium cyanamide having 20.6 percent nitrogen. So, now how to apply the nitrogen fertilizer is important because nitrogen is very mobile in the soil. So, leasing losses is more in case of nitrogen and so we have to apply uh, nitrogen in split doses, not at the one time, but during the different growth stages we have to apply nitrogen. So, that in during different uh, stages it is applied and it is uh, met uh, the need of the uh, nitrogen uh, to the plant and it is not lost to the soil. Under the phosphatic fertilizer, we categorize water soluble phosphatic fertilizer which are available in the neutral soil and readily absorbed by the young plants. In acid soil, they form iron and aluminum phosphate and not available. And likewise, in calculated soils, they also converted into the insoluble calcium phosphate and not available. So, water soluble phosphate fertilizers are single superphosphate which is having 18 percent uh, P2O5 and double superphosphate having 32 percent P2O5, triple superphosphate having 46 to 48 percent P2O5 and ammonium phosphate having 20 percent P2O5. Another is citric acid soluble phosphatic fertilizer which are suitable for acidic soil because at low pH citric soluble phosphorus is converted to monocalcium phosphate and which is water soluble and therefore available in the plant. So, phosphorus is not fixed uh, in iron and aluminum phosphate uh, which are calcium phosphate which is having 14 percent P2O5, basic silage which is having 20 percent P2O5 and calcium metaphosphate which is having 60 to 64 percent P2O5. Water and citrate insoluble phosphatic fertilizer are insoluble in water as well as in citric acid. They are suitable in strongly acidic soil and organic soil. These fertilizers are applied in green manure field and the phosphorus is very slowly released by microbes at action and remain in the soil for a longer time. Under this category, two fertilizers are there, rock phosphate which is having 20 to 30 percent P2O5 and bond meal having 21 to 25 percent P2O5. Now, we talk about potassium fertilizers. We categorize again into the five category, potassium chloride or muriate potash having the 58 to 60 percent P2O5 and it is most common and cheapest potassium fertilizer used and it is suitable for most of the crops except sugarcane, sugar beet, potato and tobacco because in these crops it is harmful for example, in tobacco it is harmful for leaf and so burning quality is reduced In sugarcane it is not good for the sugar content and in potato also quality is reduced due to muriate of potash. So, another fertilizer is potassium sulphate. It can be safely used for any crop and it contains 48 to 50 percent K2O. Potassium magnesium sulphate is double salt of potassium sulphate and magnesium sulphate contain 22 percent K2O and 11 percent magnesium and 22 percent sulphur. Potassium nitrate is also known as salt peter. It contains 13 percent nitrogen and 44 percent K2O. Potassium polyphosphate contains 56 percent P2O5 and 24 percent K2O. So, these are the different fertilizers. Now, we will talk about the application of these fertilizer. So, nitrogen we talk that we have to apply in different split doses, but phosphorus and potassium we have to apply at the time of sowing because it is not readily available and um, most of the applied fertilizers are fixed in the soil. So, at the time of sowing when we apply it will be readily available to the seed and then to the plant roots. Another is biofertilizer. So, biofertilizer are defined as preparation containing living cells and 
latent cells of efficient stents of microorganism that help crop plants in uptake of nutrient by their interaction in the rhizosphere when applied through seed or soil. They accelerate certain microbial process in the soil which augment the extent of availability of nutrient in a form easily assimilated by plants. So, different examples of biofertilizers are nitrogen fixing biofertilizers that is free living biofertilizers are azetobacter, basilica, clostridium and salvacilla, anabina and nostoc. Symbiotic nitrogen fixing biofertilizers are rhizobium, frankia, anabina, azola, etc. Associated symbiotic nitrogen fertilizers are azoospirarium. Some peat solubilizing biofertilizers are in case of bacteria, Bacillus megatarium, variety phosphaticum, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus circulans, Pseudomonas strata, and in the fungi, Penicillium species, Aspergillus abamori are important for solubilizing of phosphorus. Some biofertilizer mobilize the phosphorus in the soil. For example, arbuscular mycorrhiza species are glomus. Uh, Giza spora, uh, Echola spora, and Chukotalo spora, and Iskadaro species are important for mobilizing of phosphorus in the soil. Some ectomycorrhiza like Lacaria, Silothas, and Bulletas, Amania species are important. And in case of uh, Iricoid mycorrhiza, uh, Pigella irica, and Orchid mycorrhiza. Rhizotonia solani are important P mobilizing biofertilizers. Biofertilizer for micronutrients are uh, bacillus mainly for silicate and zinc solubilizing uh, biofertilizer and some uh, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria like pseudomonas also important biofertilizer. So, among different biofertilizers, rhizobium is important one and species of rhizobium differs from crop to crop. So, for free group rhizobium leguminosum is used for soybean group rhizobium japonicum is used for lupini group rhizobium lupini is used and for lucian group rhizobium melilotai is used and for bean group rhizobium facellus loci bacteria is used and for clover group rhizobium trifloi and for kaifi group rhizobium different species are used and for uh, bengal gram also rhizobium species is used Now, we talk about the crop rotation with the legumes because legumes are fixer of nitrogen. So, if we incorporate or if we include in legumes crops in the crop rotation, it can add the nitrogen to the soil. So, legumes derive 70 to 80 percent of their nitrogen from the atmosphere through the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. So, nitrogen benefits associated crop including legumes in crop rotation could be used legumes uh, for incorporation of legumes in the crop rotation at least 25 percent of total rotation should be legumes. If uh, grain legumes are taken then uh, some more about at least 50 percent of total share of legumes should be there. Uh, in case of forest and green manure this crop rotation uh, can be further uh, increased up to the 50 to 75 percent of crop rotation. Rotation with legume can add 40 to 60 kg nitrogen per hectare depending on the type of legume grown. So, now we talk about the integrated plant nutrition supply system. So, we have talked about the different sources of organic uh, manures and uh, different types of nutrient sources. So, integrated nutrient supply system is includes all the types of nutrient uh, sources and then uh, combination of different sources uh, make the uh, this uh, concept. So, integrated plant nutrition system is a holistic approach to plant nutrition by obtaining the nutrients from both inorganic and organic sources to maintain and sustain soil fertility and enhance crop productivity in a framework of an ecological compatible, socially acceptable and economical viable situation. It is the plant nutrient supply at an optimum level for sustaining the desired productivity through optimization of benefits.
from all possible sources of organic, inorganic and biological component in an integrated manner. So, what is the need of IPNS? Because use of only chemical fertilizer leads to widespread nutrient deficiency in soil, development of nutrient imbalance in soil and plants, reduce the soil organic matter, it disturbs the soil reaction, increases susceptibility to pests and diseases, harmful to beneficial soil microorganisms, reduce legume root nodulation and plant mycorrhizal association, increases environmental pollution and thus all these factors lead to the uh, threat to sustainability. For that uh, we have to uh, need IPNS and these are uh, benefited uh, because application of nutrient from different sources uh, organic, inorganic, bio component uh, with minimum use of chemical fertilizer keeps the soil healthy. It plays a vital role in maintaining soil fertility and keeping the soil productivity. It supplies both macro and micronutrients. It enhances the nutrient availability without adverse effect on the environment. It increases the yield efficiency of crops to other inputs. It produces optimum crop yield without deteriorating resources for future agriculture. Therefore, it leads to sustainability. So, in this part we have talked about uh, integrated nutrient plant supply system in which we have talked that there are different sources of plant nutrient either inorganic, organic or bio component. So, um, only applying through the one source is not profitable because it leads to imbalance in the nutrient. So, we have to apply different sources of nutrient through the integrated manner including combination of all the sources of plant nutrition.